Hey, what is up, everybody? I am here to give you guys my WWE 205 Live review for July 25th, 2017. And uh, I know I missed the show originally, but that uh, I was at my friend's house uh, that night, and then I was doing another thing, so I'm here to give you guys the video now. Um, and, uh, you know, we got some pretty interesting matchups on this show. Uh, we have a tag team match. It's going to be... Uh, you know, Cedric Alexander and Rich Swan versus uh, Tony Nese and TJP. This is obviously another game's um, another thing of uh, what game of one-upsmanship between uh, Witch Swan and TJP. Uh, so I don't really care about that. I think the match will be decent, though. I hope that uh, Cedric Alexander and Witch Swan win, because I think Cedric Alexander should be the next contender to face Neville for uh, the Cruiserweight Championship. Um, and then we have, um, you know, another match on the show. It's going to be Neville versus uh, Aria Davali. Uh, this match is set up because uh, Aria Davali um, attacked Neville last night while he was confronted at Kira Tozawa. Hope Neville just destroys him. Because uh, I not that I don't like Aria Davali, but it's just really weird how he's just all of a sudden getting this push when he was been a job on 205 Live for months. Uh, so I kind of hope that uh, you know Neville wins. Because if Neville's going to lose a match, it shouldn't be to uh, Aria Davali. And that's pretty much uh, the entire card. It looks uh, pretty decent, but we're going to have to wait and see about how this show actually goes. So let's just get right into it. Okay, so uh, the first thing that happens is uh, Neville gets interviewed, and he talks about his match coming up with uh, Aria Diwali. And he says that Aria Diwali may think that this, uh, you know, that he's going to take throne to his kingdom just because he was missing for one week. But he said that he's going to, uh, that. Uh, that's no further than, from the case because he says that tonight he's going to show Aria Davali um, that the 205 Live is still his kingdom. And he says that he may have uh, had a good week show last week, taking out Akira Tozawa, but that's because he allowed him to. And he says that when um, he steps in the ring with uh, Neville, he's going to find out that he is the true kin of 205 Live and the kin of the Cruiserweight. I thought this was a very good form where made Neville look like, you know, <laughs> you made him look with statistic, not statistic, but um, it made him look uh, very, like, like he wanted to hurt Aria Dabawi, and uh, it was a really good form by Neville, and like I've always, like I've been saying for, about Neville for months, he's probably the best champion on the main roster right now, uh, he's a great champion, so uh, yeah, overall this was a, a very good uh, interview segment. All right, so we had the uh, um, actual show itself. We had uh, Corey Graves and uh, Vic Joseph on commentary for this show. And uh, we had the first actual match on this show. It was uh, Aria Davali versus Neville with uh, Akira Tozawa on commentary. And before the match, Aria Davali uh, says that he would like to welcome everybody out here um, tonight. Uh, but he says that he, uh, but then he would be a liar because. Uh, Akira Tozawa is out there, and he talks about how he's crippled Akira Tozawa's shoulder, completely wiped him out of the uh, contention for the Cruiserweight Championship. And um, he says that um, he, last night he took out the kin, so-called kin of the Cruiserweights, and he dedicates his victory um, to, uh, um, you know, um, a great Arabian um, um, hero, that's an Olympian, I forget his name off the top of my head. And he says that when people uh, look down on this day, when, when people remember this day, they're going to remember as their hero, Aria Devari, defeated the kin of the cruiserweights, Neville. Uh, I thought this was uh, an all-way promo. Um, and then uh, we had the match. Uh, a lot of the beginning of the match, Aria Devari wanted away from Neville, playing mind games with him. And then eventually... Uh, Aria Devari goes in the win. He hits a knee right to the head of Neville. He throws him into the barricade twice. He throws him into the steel post. And then he hits a frog splash on him, covers him. Neville kicks out. And then um, he goes for the uh, hemlock clothesline. Neville ducks it, hits a super kick. And then he destroys Aria Devari. He hits a uh, low drop kick on him. And he throws him on the outside. He, uh, you know, goes, bounces his head off the announcer's table. And he looks right at Akira Tozawa. And, uh, you know, Kira Tozawa just stands up, takes off his headset, and uh, Aria Devari shoves Neville into Akira Tozawa and gets in, rolls in the win. Uh, Neville gets counted out, so Aria Devari wins. 
And, uh, yeah. I didn't really care for the finish. Where's this push coming from from fucking Aryo Davari? He went from being, like, a jobber, like, about a month ago, and now he's not all of a sudden number one contender to the Cruiserweight Championship. This reminds me of a certain WWE champion named Jinder Mahal, where he was a jobber, and then all of a sudden he's number one contender to the WWE Championship. You're gonna fucking tell me now that um, Aria Davari is all of a sudden just going to be cruiserweight champion and going to be able to defeat Neville. Like, this was kind of stupid. I thought this made Neville look really stupid. The fact that he went over there and he instigated Akira Tozawa and he expected him not to do anything about it. That was pretty stupid. Um, Neville should have just easily squashed him, um, in my opinion. Um, and it looks like they're setting up a triple threat match. I quite frankly have no fucking interest in seeing Aria Davari involved in this feud. It should just really be Neville and Akira Tozawa in a big rematch at SummerSlam. Um, and the only reason I can think of why they're throwing Elia Dabari in there, if this is the reason, is they want to have Akira Tozawa get the title from Neville without him actually pinning Neville. But then, like, why wouldn't you just, if you don't want Neville to get pinned, what's the point of having him be champion this long and talk about how nobody can beat him? Um, it just makes it look, it just makes Neville look like more of a valuable opponent. So it's just stupid. If Neville does lose the title, it should be one-on-one -on -one against somebody. Um, then afterwards, Akira Tozawa and Neville get into a, like an exchange. They have to be held back by referees. They don't get into a wall or anything, but the referees have to like hold them back so they don't do anything. And then uh, they, both of the um, combatants walk away, and then that was it. Um, I thought this was all right stuff. I'm just not a fan of Ali and Devali being involved in this. Um, and um, I'm not a fan of that. I'm not a fan of Neville losing. Um, you know, by count out, at least it was by counter. He didn't, like, take the pin. But I think Neville, uh, because of how dominant um, he's been, I think he should, like, never lose a match. That's my thoughts there. Uh, but overall, this was all, I thought, pretty bland stuff, actually, here. Okay, so next, uh, the Brian Kendrick comes out. And I thought this was a good segment here. Nothing fantastic, but good. He comes out and he says that he tried to help people and to see in uh, the truth. Uh, but then he gets a ton of hate comments on social media about it. So instead of telling people how much of a clown Jack Gallagher is, he's going to show them. He has some photo evidence. So pretty much what he does is he does, um, he gets a picture of Jack Gallagher and he pretty much photoshops it into making him look like a clown. Um, I thought it was, he had some pretty funny lines. Um, and then uh, gentleman Jack Gallagher comes out. And Jack Gallagher says that uh, last week he tried to take the high road with uh, D. Brian Kendrick, uh, saying that he hoped he would notice his own insecurities. Um, but then he says that, I see that that's not going to work, so instead I'm going to have to take a different approach. I'm just going to knock your bloody head off. So he runs down to the win, but Kendrick walks away, and Gallagher stands tall. And Kendrick's just like, I don't fight clowns. And, uh, you know, he just takes off to the crowd. Jack Gallagher stands tall. I thought this was a pretty good segment here. I really enjoyed it. Well, I didn't really enjoy it, but I enjoyed it. Um, you know, I thought, uh, I think the storyline's given a more of, um, of a serious look. And there were gentlemen, Jack Gallagher. Uh, so I like that it's doing that. And, you know, D. Brian Kendrick and gentlemen, Ga Jack Gallagher are both good performers. And I think they're selling the storyline pretty well. And, uh, yeah, I can't wait to see them actually get into the ring together and actually have a match with each other. So I think that's going to be cool. So overall, I thought this was a pretty good segment here. Okay, so uh, the next segment is uh, Witt Swan and Cedric Alexander get interviewed, and they get at and uh, Witt Swan gets asked why he picked Cedric Alexander to be his partner, because Darcy Fuentes apparently forgets that when 205 Live and when the Cruiserweights came to war, that Witt Swan and Cedric Alexander tag team all the fucking time and are like best friends. She had to know. She just couldn't get that thought that they were actually friends. Why wouldn't he pick his friend? But anyhow. He just had to know, uh, but he said, but he doesn't even really bring that up. He just says, uh, you know, um, after what he did in that I Quit match, it's probably like a month ago now. I don't even remember how long ago it was. Um, he ha um, he had to pick him, and which um, Cedric Alexander said yes because he came uh, to uh, the WWE for some real competition, not to deal with some psychotic ex-girlfriend, and then um, TJP. And uh, Tony Nese come up, and uh, TJP says that uh, we thought that when um, that uh, Witt Swan would 
back out of the match after he picked the premier athlete to be his uh, tag team partner. Uh, but he says that we'll like, we like the fact that you brought your know, consolation prize, uh, Cedric Alexander, pretty much saying that Cedric Alexander is just there to eat the pinfall. And Cedric Alexander, um, and then uh, which one says, I thought this was supposed to be a friendly competition. And then TJP, like, who's being unfriendly here? And then Cedric Alexander says that, you know, I thought that's why you bought Tony Nese is to uh, eat the pinfall. And then Tony Nese says that, uh, you know, um, Cedric Alexander um, takes offense to it. And Cedric Alexander is like, this is supposed to be some, you know, one friend's gamesmanship, friendly gamesmanship, some friendly trash talking. It seems like you're taking it personally. And uh, TJP, like, um, so Tony Nese is, like, going to attack him. TJP holds him back. He's like, let's just save it for the win. And then that was it. Um, didn't really care much for this segment. It was pretty much there to put over this whole TJP, Witch Swan storyline. And Cedric Alexander deserves better than being a part of that. Um, and it is what it is. I did like that they make re made reference that it pretty much is going to be a fact that Tony Nese and Cedric Alexander – are probably going to be the ones that eat the pinfalls on their team. So I did like that they kind of made that joke. Uh, but other than that, this uh, Spaz Six segment I thought was lame. All right, so then we had the uh, main event. It was uh, a tag team match, TJP and Tony Nese versus uh, Witch Swan and Cedric Alexander. I thought this was a good match here. I really didn't care about it all that much, though, uh, but I still thought the match was good. I think I just don't really care about the story, and I just didn't really care about this match. Um, so, yeah, that's just kind of what I think. Uh, Witch Swan was wearing, had a pretty interesting uh, attire. He was just wearing black pants, which was kind of weird because he's normally wearing trunks. So, don't know if this is going to be a permanent thing or not. Uh, Swan and uh, Tony D start off the matchup, and um, Cedric Alexander and uh, Tony D. And uh, Witch Swan pretty much get the upper hand of Tony Nese throughout much of the matchup. Um, and then the same thing happens to TJP. And uh, then eventually they both knock him out of the win. They have both hit dives um, onto uh, both combatants, which I thought looked pretty cool. And uh, then eventually um, Cedric Alexander uh, gets distracted by Tony Nese. And uh, TJP takes out Cedric Alexander. Uh, Tony Nese and TJP get the heat on Cedric Alexander for a while. I love that spot where, uh, Tony Nese, like, sits down, um, like he's gonna do, like, a, uh, sit-up, like this, and just kicks, uh, his opponent in the corner, right in his abs while he's in the tree of wall position. He did that for Cedric Alexander. TJP hits a, uh, springboard forearm from the, uh, uh, ropes, and then eventually, uh, Cedric Alexander, um, is able to get the hot tag on Witch Swan, and he starts going off on uh, Tony Nese. He hits a uh, flip uh, double stomp, and he hits a splash on him. Um, and eventually, Tony Nese starts to hit like a bunch of kicks, and he goes for a second one, but Swan hits a kick to the head himself. He tags Cedric Alexander back in, and uh, TJP gets tagged in as well. He hits a um, the uh, flip uh, in Suguri. And uh, then eventually he goes for the, um, he hits a Spanish fly, um, covers him. Tony Nese breaks up the pin. And then uh, Witch Swan fights him off. But eventually Tony Nese is able to get the upper hand and hit, uh, slam um, Witch Swan face first into the announcer's table. And then, um, what else? Uh, TJP goes after the knee of uh, Cedric Alexander. Goes for the uh, dead knees to kick Cedric Alexander counters. He goes to go off of. And he hit the springboard, but Cedric Alexander pulls the ropes down. He lands face first in the turnbuckle. Uh, TJP makes the pin, gets the win, and then uh, that was it. Uh, they just win, and yeah, yeah that was it. Um, obviously, I guess TJP uh, got one up on uh, Witch Swan. Fine. Um, yeah, but this match really didn't have anything. Uh, the crowd didn't really care about this match. They were... Ch uh, Chan and stop dabbing at uh, TJP, which I thought was funny. They were obviously chanting CM Punk, and normally when you get CM Punk chants nowadays, um, it's during a match or segment that they don't care about. So that's my thoughts there. Um, yeah, I just didn't really care that much about, about this match because I don't really care about the story. All right, thank you guys for watching this video. Please make sure you like, comment, um, and share this video. Make sure you, you subscribe to this YouTube channel. Wrestling Fortune 44, and make sure you click on the bell so that way every time I upload a 
uh, video on this channel, you'll get the notification for it. And make sure you do the same thing for my See on Brothers and on Talking to the YouTube channels. Make sure you subscribe to those channels and make sure that you click on the bell on those channels. And that's pretty much it, guys. Talk to you later.